KUAM TV first on Guam. KUAM News, winner of the 2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. KUAM News Hotspot is brought to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. The Eagles field controversy has thrust the previously low-profile Ancestral Lands Commission back into the spotlight. It began with the governor's selection of the area, also known by its ancestral name of Lalo Mangilao, for a billion-dollar medical campus. A group of landowners have since made it clear during testimony before the legislature that they want their land back. But Admiral Benjamin Nicholson has also made it clear that the land is not excess and can only be used for public purposes and can't be returned. This January, Governor Leon Guerrero sent a land bank reform bill down to the legislature, which would place $10 million into the land bank trust fund this year and $2 million every year thereafter to compensate original landowners. The governor said the appropriations are meant to build up the land bank trust, which was created in 1999 but has not been regularly funded. It's the Ancestral Lands Commission that oversees the trust. Its job is supposed to be the return of excess land to original landowners or to provide compensation for those who will never get their land back. We talk with the executive director of the commission, John Birch, coming up next. Hi, day, everyone, and welcome to The Hub. I'm Nestor Leconto, and this week our guest is John Birch. He is the executive director of the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission. Uh, welcome to the show, John. Thank you, Nestor. Glad to be here. All right. Um, first of all, um, uh, as we mentioned during our um, pre uh, intro package, um, the Ancestral Lands Commission is involved in a number of different things. And for those people, first of all, who may not be familiar with what the Guam Land Ancestral Lands Commission does, can you just give us an overview of um, your mission and your purpose? Okay. The Guam Ancestral Lands Commission was established over 20 years ago in 1999. And uh, it's responsible for facilitating the return of excess government lands to the original landowners or their heirs, uh, except in circumstances when land is clearly under existing public use or, or are non-ancestral lands. So if the land is retained by, uh, for public use by the federal or local government, the ancestral lands is commission is to compensate the original landowners or the heirs with funds from the Ancestral Land Bank Trust. And the funds in the Land Bank Trust are accumulated from lease, currently accumulated from leases, lease proceeds of non-ancestral lands uh, that the ancestral lands holds title to um, as trustees on behalf of the uh, dispossessed ancestral landowners whose lands were taken by the United States government or the government of Guam on or after January 1st, 1930. So in a nutshell, that's who we are. All right. So as you mentioned, it's been in, in place for the last uh, 20 years or so. Um, what is the current status of the commission and how much, like, for example, uh, land um, have you, uh, uh, how, how much compensation have you provided? How much land have you been able to return? Um, that sort of thing. Okay. As far as returned land, we've returned uh, exactly 2,648 uh uh, nine acres as of today. Uh, the last five acres were returned uh, in November of last year. And these are properties that are returned under a U.S. Uh, law. It's 103339, which allows us, it has a loophole that allows us to return properties. But not all properties are returned under that U.S. law. Some are returned uh, under uh, U.S. Uh, public law 106504. And another one, I believe, is... Uh, U.S. Law uh, 100-202, which that one allows the federal government to return property directly uh, to GPA. And these are like the power plants and such that are being returned. They Those ones do not go through us. But under 106, 103, they are processed through ancestral lands. And, and, that's, and it's only because of the recent uh, issue of the uh, lease of property for the medical uh, campus in Manila that uh, U.S. Public Law 103504 has become public knowledge. Uh, people weren't aware of it in the past. What that did was close the loophole that was allowed for under the previous U.S. law. Right. 
Uh, I want to get into more detail uh, on that in, in a bit, but also wanted to ask, how about in terms of uh, compensation? Monetary compensation? We have yeah. not made any. And, okay. and there's the, the problem with that is there's a problem with our enabling act. Uh, it's too ambiguous. And that's how come the governor, uh, you know, because of the, the solution that was needed caused by the roadblock of 106, uh, 504, uh, the governor decided to fix this for us once and for all. She asked uh, ancestral lands to come up with a solution, and we we prepared that for her. And uh, she went over it, and she submitted it as uh, in bill form to the legislature. And this will clear up that issue. Uh, that issue was brought up when we uh, the, where we had problems with that by um, the last, I guess, in 2017 when Ancestral Land submitted uh, some rules and regulations to the uh, Attorney General's office. Right. And let me find, uh, I have a list of, of the issues that uh, were brought up there uh, that the AG had with it. And, and basically what, what the Attorney General said was uh, with the draft rules, it said one, it lacked an economic impact statement as required by 5GCA. And uh, it also contradicted the statutory man mandate of the land bank to establish a mechanism for compensation to the beneficiaries of the land bank for the extinguishment of claims to the ancestral lands. Uh, those rules, they had a perpetual clause in it, and that's not allowed. So we're definitely going to remove that. Uh, the big ones that we have that we need uh, this law for is... Uh, to correct with the current law is the statutory definition of land bank beneficiary. It's too ambiguous. And then the statutory guidance is insufficient to govern the distribution of land bank funds, which is an excess uh, delegation of legislative power and a violation of separation of power doctrine. That was brought up by the uh, attorney general's office. In short, the opinion that until such time that the legislature amends the current statute with several specifics in regards to definitions and payment and the ancestral lands uh, commission will essentially be unable to submit legally acceptable rules and regulations with regard to dispossess ancestral landowner compensation and the problem with that is that until that's done the ancestral lands commission cannot move forward with its mandate to compensate dispossessed landowners whose lands cannot and will not be returned until the land bank rules and regulations are finalized. And the ancestral lands cannot move forward with the land bank rules and regulations until the statutory issues that we mentioned, I mentioned earlier are addressed. And that's, that's right. what the governor presented with this bill. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. John, um, what's, what's the let fix me stop it? you right the there. Um, and we'll continue our conversation about the Land Bank Reform Act of 2023 right after this short break. Did someone say free cake? You can win a Cold Stone Creamery ice cream cake every Friday for your birthday celebrants. Birthdays deserve to be celebrated, so let us share your celebratory shoutouts on the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Recognize friends, family, or loved ones by registering them on their special day. You can include names, photos, a birthday, and a special message to Birthday Club at KUAM.com by noon on weekends and noon on Friday for weekend birthday shoutouts. Watch your dedications weekdays on the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club on KUM News Primetime and the social media channels of KUM Communications. The Birthday Club is presented by KUM Communications and Cold Stone Creamery. Okay, we're back with uh, Guam Ancestral Lands Commission Executive Director John Birch. And uh, before the break, we were talking, John, about the Land Bank Reform Act of 2023, which the governor submitted, I think, late last year. Um, you were talking about um, various issues that um, the AG had brought out um, that need to be um, embedded or corrected in the bill so that you can begin uh, the compensation process. And as you mentioned earlier, um, you have not been able to compensate any um, um, ancestral landowners at this point. So, so once again, can you go over what the main hurdles are that you think? And then I think the, this bill will go before a public hearing um, in April, correct? 
I'm hoping so, at least to give us time to work with our partners across the street at the legislature to, to come up with a solution. Uh, they may not agree with everything that we've proposed, and but if they have a counter proposal, at least let's find something to finally compensate the uh, ancestral landowners who were who had their property taken from them unjustly. So that's what we need is we do definitely need the public hearing to iron this out. We the governor put our proposal for it before them, and now we will need to know what their response is to that and see if we can come up with some compromise, something that will work, a solution to this whole issue. But yeah. like with the like I said earlier, from what the AG told us is that uh, we can't move forward till we fix the law. The law yeah. is too ambiguous. It they transferred too much authority to ancestral lands. They transferred legislative authority to the executive branch, which is not allowed. And because of that, the AG rejected the original uh, draft rules and regs or proposed rules and regs that were submitted back in 2017. And so until we fix that, we can't move forward with the rules and regs. So we got to fix the law first. And that's okay. what this whole new proposal is. It's a solution to that. So uh, as soon as we get the... Uh, public hearing on this, we can move forward and hopefully work together. I mean, there, there are issues of returning the property. 106 was a big one that came out recently. And because of the spotlight on the return of property for the medical center uh, shined on, on the lots up there, because those properties in Manila, uh, the transfer authority they've been given back to Gov Guam is under 106-504. Yeah. And, and, and that's why the spotlight is, is shown on this. But then in a way that's good for the rest of the uh, uh, ancestral landowners that we do have the spotlight because now the issue is finally being addressed. Um, before this administration, before the Leon Guerrero Tenor administration came in, not too many people heard about ancestral lands or even knew that it existed. Everybody confused us with Chamorro Land Trust or Department right. of Land Management. Uh, it was only when we decided to resolve this issue and the, one of the first acts of the governor, our first uh, executive order was to reestablish the agency because uh, she knew there were issues that had to be brought forth. And this is one of those. So she really wants to return the property if, if possible. But we've informed her that because of this law that... Uh, I guess very few people were aware of. I mean, this law has been around since the year 2000. Right. And uh, until we shone the light on it with what was going up on with uh, the Manila property in the area, Lalo, which is also referred to as Eagles Field. Until that came about, people weren't aware of this problem. People assumed that uh, the process for returning property was already set uh, because of what uh, of, of the way it was handled under previous US law uh, that 103339, which allowed or provided a loophole for economic development or economic de uh, benefit and returning property. Uh, it was opinion by the legislature and they came up with uh, local laws that said that returning property to regional landowners would provide for economic uh, benefit for, for the island by them developing their property and so on. But as soon as they established ancestral lands in 1999, then uh, 106, 504 came out in the year 2000 to close that loophole. So that kind of ended it, but not all property is being returned under 106, 504. We still have property being returned under 103, 339. So those properties, uh, we will look forward to returning it to the original landowners. Uh, the process for that would be that as soon as the properties received by the government of Guam through the Department of Land Management, the director there, would transfer that to us and we'll put it in our excess uh, land registry. And then our commissioners, the board that oversees my actions, uh, will decide what to do with those properties. If Gov Guam or government agency wants those properties, uh, they would have, to, they have 45 days to petition the board of commissioners of the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission. And they will make that decision at that time. And I can say that uh, the board will they are very, very uh, concerned about returning property to original landowners, and they would do their best to find a way to get that returned to the original yeah. landowners. But 106, 504 uh, kind of cut that off, you know. Right. So, 
talk, talk a little bit more about the compensation too, because there are going to be landowners who will never get their property back. Um, they may want an exchange and that's a, a potential resolution as well, but compensation is also in the cards uh, for those who, um, you yes. know, whose property is on, um, on uh, beneath structures that, you know, will, will not, will not uh, be uh, uh, allowed it to be returned. So um, I know the governor um, had submitted a bill that provides a $10 million for the land bank and then $2 million a year uh, going forward. Um, talk about uh, that uh, aspect. Okay. Uh, most of the funds that we make, currently we have a close to $16 million in the land bank. But compared to the uh, 2,000 or so claimants in the John Bond files, I mean, and not all land... Uh, uh, ancestral landowners are claimants in the John Bonds. Uh, many of them weren't aware that that was even going on. They were off island or they just simply weren't aware of it. So many of those people are coming John, in. John, for those who don't know, John Bond is, uh, was the attorney for the original um, yes. land, land Claims Commission, I believe it was. Yes, and uh, that was back in the 70s. And some of them received uh, uh, some compensation, but according to many of the people we talked to, the compensation wasn't worth the, the value of the property. So they, they're still claiming for their lands. And that's what we're trying to fix here is the injustice that occurred, you know, when people had their properties taken back in 1950. Um, you know, they had a big sweep, you know, uh, right after the war, uh, the military came in and decided that they needed property for national defense. And they took over a huge portion of our island. And at first they did it under the guise of leases. And if you go back and look at all the properties back in, before we became US citizens with the passage of the Organic Act, everything was uh, listed as leases. And so people assumed the property were being leased. But as soon as the people of Guam uh, became US citizens in 1950, all of a sudden those leases became uh, condemned properties um, under eminent domain. And many people, didn't realize that their properties were condemned. Uh, they assumed that they were getting paid leases for it and they wondered why uh, the leases stopped. So these were the stories that we received from talking to people. So there was a lot of uh, controversy and there still continues to this day you know, during those land takings because of that. Uh, but yes, uh, with the, the bill that the governor submitted, uh, currently the way things worked out is that to be a member of, or be a beneficiary of the land bank, your property with the current law, your property must have been returned to GovGuam and kept by GovGuam for continued public use. Uh, the example I always use is the airport. Um, you know, there's about 400 families up there where we actually have the airport seated, seated at, and they didn't get, and they will never get their property back because it's kept for the community use for continued public use. There's 400 families and it's about a thousand acres. Um, so that is, those people will fall under and do fall under the land bank. Uh, for those people whose properties are leased uh, from the federal government and whose properties have not been returned to GovGuam, uh, they will not. And this is, a lot of people aren't aware of it, much of the uh, GPA power lines are federal leases. So those people will not be included. And of course, those whose properties are behind the fence, like at Naval Station and Anderson and Naval Magazine, uh, those properties, uh, I doubt, are going to ever be intended to be returned to uh, the government of Guam. So they're not part of the land bank. Only those whose properties have been returned and kept by Gov Guam currently are part of the land bank. So what this bill proposes to do is to include all those folks. They have two classifications. Uh, want to be class one and class one would include all those whose properties have been returned to government of Guam or those who have been given control to Gov Guam, for example, through leases. Uh, okay. And that would take care of the area in Eagles Field. They become class ones and automatically become members of the land bank. Okay, John, then let me, class um, two. Let me, yes. let me take a quick break before we can go back and uh, we'll, we'll come back and do, uh, go into more details of what you're talking about, because I think that's what people are going to be very, very interested in, um, yes. especially those who may not know um, what the mission of the Ancestral Lands Commission has been all these years. But let's take a quick break and then we'll, we'll go back and dig more deeper into uh, what you're talking about in just a moment. Okay.
All right, we're back with uh, Guam Ancestral Lands Commission Executive Director John Birch. And before the break, John, you were talking about um, the process by which um, folks um, who may have a, a claim as ancestral landowners, what that process uh, might uh, look like. It's, can you please uh, just continue on that? Uh, yes, um, we were on uh, class two. Uh, class one, again, to repeat that, class one are those people whose properties have been returned to Gov Guam and kept for continued public use. Uh, and those whose property in the bill will be those properties who are leased or control is given back to Gov Guam. Now, class two are those people whose properties are kept by the federal government with no intent to ever be returned to Gulf Guam. Those are like the military bases, you know, up at Anderson Air Force Base, Noble Magazine, Naval Station, and now Camp Bloss, and other properties uh, that may be used for missile defense systems. So that would include those folks. And the governor feels that, uh, and we feel here at Ancestral Lands, that you know, the injustice that these people went through with the land condemnations and takings back in 1950 have not been addressed. Uh, some of them were paid only a few dollars for acres of property. And today, you know, even with the John Bond uh, uh, land claims, many of them weren't paid what, what their value was. So this also, this bill also sets up a way for us to, to deal with that. And that's not provided for in the current law. So hopefully, uh, if we sit down with the legislature and go over this, we can go over it in great detail and to find what the policy is of the legislature, because they set policy for Gov Guam. Uh, do they want to continue with just uh, the current uh, beneficiaries who are listed as beneficiaries of the land bank, if they want to keep that as their policy? and not include people whose properties have been leased to Gov Guam, whether it be Eagles Field with the lease that we know that's coming, and or GPA or Waterworks who have leases with the federal government that nobody really thought about in the past, that this is a whole lot of people out there. Um, uh, do they want to include these folks whose properties are kept by the federal government but are being used by Gov Guam currently uh, for utilities? Uh, or and what about the folks who will never get their lands back? Uh, those up at Anderson and Naval Station. Uh, we need, the legislature has to set policy for, for that. Right now, that's ambiguous as far as the current laws is concerned. And that's where we had a problem with the first rules and regs that were submitted because the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission felt that the, the way the current laws, uh, the current laws written, it allowed for that. And they, they included everyone. But when yeah. it got to the attorney general's office, they disagreed. So we have to set policy. The legislature, that's their duty. They have to tell us and what the policy will be. So what we did is we included all of them in this bill when we presented it to the to the governor uh, that ancestral lands and all others want, and all these folks out there we talked to, they want to be included as uh, beneficiaries of the land bank. And right. um, so we threw all of that in and we'll let the legislature make the decision. Uh, who do they want to cut out or do they want to leave it as it is today with only those folks whose properties have been returned and kept by Gulf Guam? Right. You know, it's, it's a policy decision. And we feel here at Ancestral Lands that we want to, uh, first priority is to return property to all the landowners out there who's had their properties taken. That's our number one priority. Now, if we can't do it for whatever reason I mentioned earlier, uh, at least to try to find some justice in this and compensate them monetarily if possible. Now, with that compensation, it's who becomes beneficiaries of the land bank? Uh, those whose properties who are returned and kept by Gov Guam or those whose property are leased by Gov Guam or Gov Guam has control over it or to include those whose properties are still held behind the fence. And of course, if you talk to all these landowners, like what we've done here, uh, we actually had various meetings with them last year on this uh, over months at a time. And at times it was two or three times a week having meetings with the, the families of these uh, landowners. And uh, of course, they all want their property returned. Sure. I don't blame them. I yeah. mean, it's a part of our culture. What defines our culture is not only our language, but our land. That's, yeah. that's what defines us. So. So Absolutely. I understand their frustration, 
And we here at Ancestral Lands, we're trying to find a way to do our best to get them compensated one way or the other. And we all know the reality is, is that uh, the U.S. military is here for a long time. They're here to stay. Yeah. Uh, they're not about to pull out and give us back Anderson Air Force Base or Naval Station. They're not about to do that. They moved all the people in Sumai up Santa Rita and into Agate. Uh, will they get their property back at Naval Station? I doubt that very much with the way uh, the current world situation is with Oh, yeah. The Ukraine geopolitical situation kind of begs the fact that um, those excess lands, and I think the Admirals even said that at this point, there is no more excess land. John, we got to take one more quick break, and then we'll be back to wrap this up right after this. Have you had your updated COVID-19 bivalent booster? This is the updated booster to protect you from both the original virus that causes COVID-19, as well as the Omicron and other variants. Why get the bivalent booster? The virus that causes COVID changes over time and different versions of the virus called variants are expected to occur. Getting the updated booster is important for children six months to four years who completed the Moderna primary series and for everyone five years and older, if it's been at least two months since the last COVID-19 vaccine dose. An updated booster helps restore protection that may have waned over time, including protection against severe illness, hospitalization, and death. Get the booster for protection. Remember, prevention saves lives. Get all your beverages delivered from the Bottle Shack on the Unago app and website. Whether you're watching the big game, celebrating a milestone, or just want to unwind at home, we got you. Delivering spirits, soft drinks, beer, ice, and more right to your front door. Check out our Instagram page for monthly specials and giveaways. The Bottle Shack on Unago. The fast, safe, and responsible way to enjoy life. Must be 21 in order to order. Delivery is limited to certain villages. Visit uno-go.com or download the app today. Drink responsibly. All right, uh, John Birch, we've got about a minute or so left. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of wrap it up and, and, and speak to, um, you know, potential um, land own, uh, landowners out there who are due for some compensation or uh, return of excess lands. What is your message to them? Well, my message is to stay involved. Uh, don't drop out of, of, of getting active fight for your properties, uh, let us know and let the legislature know what the policy of Go Guam should be. Because mm -hmm. with this uh, public hearing that's coming up, I will go in there and explain the, the difficulties we have and the challenges we're dealing with and the proposals that we have put before the legislature. But they have to make that policy decision. Uh, they are the policy makers, they establish the laws. What we do here is we follow the laws uh, that are presented to us. And that is, of course, the Constitution of the United States, the federal laws of the United States, and then the laws of Gulf Guam. And if they can help find a loophole to return these properties under 106504, Ancestral Lands will follow that and we would do our best uh, to get those properties returned. But if we don't have a way to go around that U.S. public law that closed that loophole, uh, we don't see a way of returning that property. Uh, so we need their assistance. We need them to convince our legislators on what they actually want. We've met with them. We've met with many of the uh, ancestral landowners in meetings and many of them, no matter what, they want their land back. But a great number of them said, knowing the difficulties that we have, knowing the world situation today, they would want to get uh, be compensated monetarily if they can't get their properties back. And they realize the difficulty we're going through. And, and they understand uh, now you know, the threat that we're facing with the issue of China and Taiwan. And right. the, now the, what the Admiral stated very clearly that uh, if we don't use these properties or they're not given to us, they're not gonna be returned until this whole world situation calms down. Uh, it's been years since their properties were taken. I mean, since 1950. Actually, 1947, if you count the leases, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's been decades. And ancestral land has been around for over 20 some years. And we've had problems and it kind of disappeared off the map for a while. 
uh, but with this administration, we're back here and we're doing our best to get this whole issue resolved. So, yeah. while if, there's, if there's anything the Eagles Field controversy has brought to the forefront, it is the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission. I wish yes. we had more time, John, but uh, we are out of it. Thank you so much. John Birch is the executive director of the Guam and Central Land Claims Commission. Thanks for joining us, John. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much. You have a great day. All right. I'm Nestor Lecompton. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you again next week on The Hub.